not speak to a civilian holler, the one where the guy just hands over his phone and tells the woman to put her number in, is exactly what constitutes spinning game in LA. I want to have fun out here, flirt a little, giggle some, have an adventure. But I won't be handing out my number to men without enough consideration to introduce themselves first. I embarrass the first man who tries this with me with a loud, are you kidding me? <laughs> now we're parked on some side street off La Cienega and Sarah's truck. We drop by a diner, it seems to be the unofficial after party for every club in LA. It reminds me of the scene in Boys in the Hood, where Ice Cube and Regina King are hanging out on the strip. <laughs> Except we're in Hollywood, not Compton, and everyone as far as the eye can see is bougie. <laughs> I'm bored. <laughs> we're killing time waiting for some athlete Tiffany met yesterday to call or text her back. He hit her around one, mentioned he was headed to a party in the hills, and now she's been blowing up his phone for the last hour trying to meet up. He hasn't responded. My guess? He found a woman who hit him back faster, and he's hanging out with her for the night. Tiffany's sharing her frustrations with Sarah in the front seat while I text Penelope to ask if the whack collar in LA is common or situational. I hate when people come to New York, have a bad time, then think the whole city must suck just because their tour guide did. <laughs> Penelope types back, LA is whack. <laughs> That's a lot of that. <laughs> So could I read that out there? <laughs> I'm staring out the window, ignoring the trite conversation in the front seat, and I'm wondering if we're going to get food anytime soon. And that's when I spot a bright red car cruising down the street. Red anything out here makes me nervous. <laughs> I'm thinking blood, not Catholics. <laughs> so, what's with the red Bentley? I asked the women in the front seat. They're from LA, they should know. Sarah doesn't bother to turn around. Suge Knight, he's always out here. Really? <laughs> he drives by our truck, peering into our vehicle as he passes. My first thought, he looks a lot less intimidating in person, like a really large chair. <laughs> it's the cheeks. Now I really feel like I've seen LA, I quit. We should follow him. I'm joking. <laughs> Every time I read this, I'm like, what was I thinking? I'm joking. But Sarah puts the car in drive. We pull out behind Shug Bentley. Oh my God, what are you doing? Tiffany blurts at me and Sarah. We cannot follow Shug Knight. We're breaking the second law of celebrity industry civilian interaction. <laughs> it's an unwritten rule that says anyone living in a major city and remotely associated with the entertainment industry, i.e. the industry, as if it's the only one that ever existed or mattered, <laughs> cannot get excited about, approach, or acknowledge a celebrity in any manner inconsistent with how they would acknowledge a fellow civilian or industry colleague. To do so is to reveal yourself as a groupie, a newcomer, or someone who does not belong on the inside. I would never contemplate following Shug Knight in New York. But on vacation? <laughs> Anything goes. <laughs> We're already following Shug Knight, I suggest. Let's ask him to breakfast. Sarah looks at me through the rearview mirror. I can tell by the look on her face she's intrigued. I don't know what I'm doing, mind you. I just know for the first time in 36 hours, I'm not bored. Honk the horn. <laughs> it sounds like a good idea. At Shug Knight, Tiffany screeches, I realize they may know something I don't. <laughs> Is this dangerous? We're women. Do you think Shug Knight will fight women? <laughs> Nobody says anything, so I just assume we're fine. <laughs> Honk. Sarah does. I tell them to wave from the front seat. They do. The Bentley's hazard lights go on. The car pulls over. Tiffany and Sarah are giggling wildly in the front seat. Now what do we do, Sarah asks. Um, pull over. <laughs> she does, maneuvering the truck in front of Shug's car. 